So I'm, I've been working on the hands on these fellows and working to finish this up because this painting, this painting and like the other ones I've been working on this month are taking me forever. I have a lot going on, but I'm still, I've been dragging my feet. So I want to get this done for the silks. Um, I want to get this to them as soon as possible. It, it's a gift, but I, I like to be timely on things. And I have someone coming in in a couple days. My friend Andy is coming in to stretch a canvas for me. Maybe two, I, if I can talk him into it. But he's kind enough to come stretch for me so I can move on. And I can start showing you on video how I do my paintings from beginning to end. So anyway, back to the silks um, and finishing up their hands. Excuse me for a sec. I've been doing figurative work <clears throat> since I was about 14 years old. I started taking classes for, uh, for sorry, figure drawing um, when I was 14. And I started going to my local college for classes. <clears throat> and uh, at first it was really hard. Uh, sitting there, I was 14 years, maybe 13 years old, uh, sitting, 13 year old, high, 13, 14 year old high school student sitting in a classroom with boys in it, and there's a naked woman in the middle of the room. It was horrible. I, I, it was so hard. I wanted to be there in the worst way, but I didn't want anyone else in the room while I was there because there was this naked lady, and I'd never been in a room with a naked lady before or a naked anyone. It was horrifying. Everyone else seemed a lot more comfortable, and it could be because I wasn't really looking at them. I was hiding behind my newsprint, my big, gigantic piece of newsprint, just doing this. Um, but after, after a while, after doing that for a couple of months in high school, I got more comfortable with it, and it, it became a little bit easier. I didn't get better at it for a very long time, but it sparked something in me where I wanted to learn uh, the inside, the ins and outs of the human body. So in high school, I started learning about uh, skeletal structure and bone and skin. And I did these, I, I was so bad. It was, my drawings were horrible, but I did understand um, the skeletal, the skeleton and the muscular system, the muscular, I don't know, whatever it is of the human body. So that by the time I hit college, I still was not great at drawing, drawing the human body at all. But by the time I hit the Boston Museum School of Fine Arts, um, my figure drawing class teacher said to me, you really know what you're doing. And that was a huge compliment to me. At a time when I got very few compliments from people, that made me feel like a million bucks. Um, and from there, I, I went on to just I don't know, I guess just keep trying, and now it's my favorite thing in the world. I, I literally can, I can pretty much paint anything. I can't paint motorcycles, but I can almost, pretty much paint almost anything because I spent years studying and drawing, actively drawing the human body every single day, studying and learning and drawing, every single day that I could anyway. And so now I can do this. But one of the tricks I've learned in, you know, jumping ahead about a billion years from high school, uh, one of the tricks I've learned in the past few years of doing figurative painting is you don't have to cover every inch of the canvas with an actual flesh color when you're painting the human body. One of my tricks is to do more of an abstract in certain places. As you can see here, uh, this is kind of new to me. I, I've started using teals when I'm doing the faces, and then when I get down to the hands, I like to do them in a flesh color. But in a, to keep it from being predictable, I don't do the hands in total flesh color. We understand the symbolism, even though it's not, you know, totally flesh toned and oh my god, and there's the, there's the veins and the shadowing. We've got oranges, and we've got all kinds of colors in here. We do have flesh tones, we do have highlights, but we have the teals underneath. Over here we've got magentas and oranges, um, different colors that symbolize how a human hand, um, how a human hand is shaped, but without being a complete, this is the human hand. 
just as we understand this is a face without him being flesh toned. Why don't we see if I can lift him up? See if that makes him a little bit clearer. The same, I mean, that's Matt's face, and there's J uh, Tyler James's face. They're slightly abstract, they're not painted all the way through, they certainly aren't flesh toned, but we understand it. And that's the way I'm approaching the hands. I seem to be a little stuck this evening, though, where I can't find this particular sweet spot and rhythm and am able to uh, just like click, 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 snap, 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 everything falls into place. But I still got far enough along where I wanted to share with you. Now, the, I mean, there's several reasons that I do this, using different colors and not doing like, oh, you know, we have to have the thumbnail. And the main part, the main reason is, it's boring. It is so friggin' boring to see, you know, white flesh tone. I actually do not enjoy painting white people that much. I prefer painting people of different colors and nationalities. For me, that's a lot more fun. But this is what we're doing right now because this is what is asked of us. And because we are professional, we do what we are asked. We like to try and get along with people who are trying to help us. So we paint what they would prefer. Plus, Matt's not black. So, and none of these boys are of any other color than white, except they're blue, uh, teal. But anyway, um, I absolutely abhor predictability. I find it exhausting. Sargent was a brilliant figurative painter, but unless you're that level, I don't care. I want interest. There's a reason that the screen by Munk is so popular. Many reasons, actually. It, it carries more emotion than a standard painting of a, someone standing on a bridge and screaming. Someone standing on a bridge screaming would be a complete drag and it wouldn't be reproduced and people wouldn't want to collect it. It wouldn't be hanging in a museum. People would just be, it's, it's a figure of a woman screaming, who cares? I mean, I've seen some really beautiful figurative work that's absolutely stunning. But if you can't paint on a sergeant level, I'm sorry, I don't see the point of being like straightforward, this is flesh. One, actually one of my favorite painters is from Cape Cod, and um, his name is Robert Rourke. He's a realist. He's a master realist painter on a level I will never be. I could never paint like this man. He paints cherries that feel like cherries and lace that feels like lace, and it's not in an abstract like I do. It's it's realism. It is photorealism. And he does these beautiful figures of women on roller skates, naked girls on, naked women on roller skates that would knock your socks, socks off. You have to look him up. It's Robert Rourke at Winston Lee Rourke Art Gallery, or Winston Lee Rourke Art, I can't remember. And it's R O A R K. Um, I believe he's affiliated with the Cape Museum of Fine Arts now, but his work has been in the Smithsonian. He's done work for magazines. I mean, he's a genius, and he's a nice guy, and so is his wife, Anita, who's a photographer. But I don't paint like Robert. I don't paint, paint like Sargent. I don't paint, paint like Monk, either. I paint like me. So, for me, I prefer the abstract. This hand is not correct. I, this has actually been killing me lately because when I was really deliberately trying to make it feel like a hand and have the flesh tone, which was just wrong on so many levels, he looked like he had a glove on. But I wiped it down, tried again, wiped it down, tried again, wiped it down, tried again. And as I've said in other videos, this is my favorite painting tool because it gives me the freedom to say, I'm not playing this game anymore. You know, I can do better. 
this isn't working for me. Wipe it down, try again. The world won't end if you wipe it down. So, the minute I decided to try and find the colors underneath and then show uh, or indicate the, the fingers with using brighter colors, different colors, more abstract colors, it started working in my head. And that's the thing, it's click, click, click in my head. Uh, the same with Tyler. Um, Tyler's hand was really boring with uh, flesh tones and white highlights. So now, I don't know if you can see it, and I will, but I will take close-up photos and put them on Facebook and on my blog. I have magentas and oranges in his hands, and I'm really pleased with that. I'm really pleased with the way it feels. It's a dep depiction of a hand, or they are depictions of hands without being predictable. This, however, is driving me up a tree. So I've got, this, I've got to find this line in there. And I've tried a hundred different things, and it's just, there's just something that's, maybe that's it. It's just not clicking. When my work, when something's right, on the days that I can meditate and, and really get, you know, get myself to relax, it's click, 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 click. I don't even have to look at what I'm doing. It's click, 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 click. Today is not one of those days. Today, I got in late, my head's in another direction, now it's snowing out, I can't think, Bugsy's here, he's bored. I'm doing a disservice to, to the silks, so I'll be quitting soon, so I can come back tomorrow and hopefully put myself in a better space. Where, I can't remember, oh, so yeah, I've got to figure out Tyler's hand. This, you know, it doesn't have to be like I said, uh, see, that's awful. That's predictable and just, ugh, average. We don't want predictable and average. We want interesting. We want interesting. And that's not it either. You see, I'm going to try to find it while I've got the camera going. See, this is what I ran into with Matt's hand, too. With that hand, it was just predictable. I really, I hate predictable. I like dependable. I like dependable people. I like a dependable vehicle. I like, you know, I like dependable, predictable in other things, just not in my work. That's not it either. Let me see if I can find it while we're here. And if you notice, I'm painting on, well, of course you notice, I'm painting on the side again. I do like that, but I'm not sure if that's right. It's not clicking in my head. That is. There's almost, there's almost an audible sound. Yep. There's almost an audible sound when it's right. Yep. There it is. And I can feel it. It goes from here down to my gut. <clears throat> it's right. That works for me. It's right. The thumb I'm not so sure about. Let's see if I can fix that while you're here. Yep, that's it. Boom, boom. It's right. It's abstract. It's unusual. It's unpredictable. It's not something that will be seen a thousand times. And people go, yes, I like it because I recognize it because someone else did it before. Oh, it looks like everything I already know in every way. The grass is green. His hand is flesh-toned, whichever flesh tone we're looking for. Oh, yes. This is, this is what I want it to be. Unpredictable, except for that bottle. But it's still, it's got a rhythm, it's got a life to it. It's the unpredictability, the abstract, that gives it life. The colors give it life. And as I've said before, I want you to be able to zoom in 
on a teeny little section and see a whole painting in that section. And I have, I love posting stuff on Facebook. Sometimes I go in really close and I don't even know it until after I posted it. But I will have sometimes these really beautiful little abstracts will come out in teeny little sections that I really enjoy. Listen to me tooting my own horn. Through, turn this right side up. And I want to talk a little bit about, whoops, I've got plastic up covering the wall so they don't get dirty and the plastic just came down on the painting. So I'll put that up later. Um, Anyway, the shirts today I started highlighting. Started highlighting, putting in dark corners here and there. So now they're popping out and it's feeling like a shirt. This is feeling like a fitted shirt. Without me sitting down and going, yes, the fold has to be absolutely perfect and it's just slightly abstract. A little messy, but it's starting to pop, um, as well as Matt's vest. I haven't highlighted every little cord on his vest. It's just a few. They're not the same color coming down. It's not like a white little highlight. They're different. They're different. There's um, an orangey white. There's a yellowy white. There's a fleshy white. There's a greenish whites in here. They're consistent without being exact and the same. That the imperfections are in the inexactness. The imperfections are there's something. The, <laughs> the imperfections bring out the magic in the paint. The inexactness gives me room to build an abstract, but also that abstract becomes a realist, but without being too realist. I'm babbly, never mind. Anyway, there we are. This is where we are on the silks. And I hope I've been at least moderately helpful in this. Let me see, that. that's too red. Not quite. Why not? Yep. Okay, this is not going to be perfect this evening. And by perfect, I mean tricking the eye. Not, ooh, wow, absolutely perfectly shaped. Playful and abstract, unpredictable. Let's see something. Nope. Okay. I think I need to be alone with this painting for a while. Matt's hand is still driving me crazy, but it's almost there. Almost. This may be a tomorrow project because the paint is really wet. Yeah, no. Although, it might be because that little knuckle isn't white enough. Yep, that's it. Focusing on the wrong things, absolutely focused on the wrong things. I don't know if you can see what I'm doing, but I've lightened up some of the yellows. Now, let me find my little chicken can here. Oh, God. One day I'm going to have a grown up space. Trying to protect the walls, I've hung up shower curtains all along here. Um, so that I don't get paint all over my rental. <laughs> like, I've got shower curtains hanging down now. Um, anyway, in trying to be, sorry, in using that abstract idea, I put down yellow, 
but the yellow was too dark for what I wanted. Now I don't want to uh, continue with the same. I don't want to. I didn't want to continue with like, oh yes, evenly yellow. It is, that's boring. It's boring. It's like listening to someone give a speech for years on end in one long monotone. And graduates, you want color. You want life in your paintings. I mean, honestly, it took me years to understand that. Going from high school, where you're taught to be exact, or you think you have to be exact, and they don't tell you to think that way. Not, you know, they, they tell you to think, mm. and in college, it was, mm. That's because, and I appreciate that, because I had to learn the basics. I had to learn how the figure feels. How the figure, not only how the figure looks, but how it moves and how it feels. How it's constructed. And now I've got it. So I can look at that hand and go, it doesn't feel right. And I can take, it doesn't feel right, and make it feel right by using abstract shapes and bizarre colors. All the wrong colors. We need to add... To keep continuity, I've got magenta, 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 and now Tyler's got magenta in his hand. Put a little up here in Matt's hand. Yeah. And a little up in Tyler's hair. Oh, yeah. That's good. Got too much up here. All right. That's enough babbling for one night. It's getting cold in here, so I'm going home. But uh, that's what I wanted to show you was abstracts. I will take up close-up pictures so you can see them on Facebook and on my blog. You can have a better look if you're interested. Ugh, finger. The angle of his thumb in the photograph is killing me. And I'm hoping I can get it right in the, by doing it in an abstract. Anyway, I'm babbling. That's some of my tricks. Uh, but again, learning to paint like this took me years. Learning to paint people and figures took me years. But the trick, the absolute trick to it was understanding how a figure feels. Not just going, yes, this is shadow and ooh, mwah, ugh, ugh. Oh, I am so awesome. It is, how does it feel to cock your hip? With that, you can feel the weight. You, you can depict the weight. You can signify the weight, how we shift it. By in your head going, shift. How does this hand feel? The hand is incorrect. I was doing all uh, enlarged hands. I think they're fun. Um, I love hands. How does his hand feel when it's in that position. Not how does it look, how does it feel when it's in that position. How does his head feel when it's cocked like this? How does it feel? Well, get in that position. Feel it. Feel it. How does his hand feel? How does Matt's hand feel down, you know, held in that position? Feel it. And that's the most irritating thing to me right now is I can't get it right because I'm not connecting with it. I'm not feeling it. But it's almost there. Anyway, yeah, time to stop. Almost done. Almost done. Anyway, ciao.